Right now, in a complete turnaround from the last video, um, I've decided to do it myself. And uh, the reasons for that are, the more I thought about it logically, the bill, the, the check I'd be writing to um, a specialist to go and do this is a little bit open-ended, you know? You can have a very rough estimate of how much work they think is involved, but they really don't know until they get started. And once your car is there in bits in their garage, it's not like you can just pick it up and take it somewhere else if you decide they're spending too much time over it. And time is the thing that costs the money. So um, with the value of the car being what it is, it's not worth that. It's gonna be in excess of 2,000 pounds to get this sorted and it's just gonna go, you know, so it really doesn't leave me any other choice. I'm not prepared to be walking away from a car when it can be mended. It's really not beyond the wit of man to put this right. So I've got to do it myself, haven't I? This is gonna be car crash. The work necessary to get this car back on the road falls into two parts, essentially. The first part being repairing the damage in the cylinder head. Now, what the way I've decided to go with this is I was lucky enough to find um, a listing on eBay where someone was selling uh, a reconditioned cylinder head that's been pressure tested and vacuum tested so we know the valves are all good in it and it's supplied with all the valves in place and the head has been skimmed, it's nice and clean and it can go straight on. Um, I'm gonna be replacing the rockers, the rocker arms. I can't afford to replace every single rocker arm because I'm trying to work to a budget to do the whole job here. Uh, I know best practice would be to do the lot, but let's just leave it there. I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to replace eight rocker arms on the two cylinders where we know contact was made. So four were broken, four were getting replaced, and the two that still seem good on those same cylinders have been replaced as well. And, uh, and that's it. We can reassemble the head and get that back on. Once the head is back on, uh, it comes with a cylinder head gasket, by the way, and that was 200 quid delivered. So... Um, sort of reconditioned cylinder head with a gasket for 200 quid delivered. I couldn't say no, really. Gaskets alone are sort of 60 to 80 quid for a head gasket. Anyway, that's that. So that's the one part. And then the other part is doing the actual timing chain, and that's a big part of uh, the work. So that my method there is going to be to get the car up as high as we can off the ground, drop the gearbox down, and do the work from underneath in the back of the engine. And that's how it's going to be, okay? It's gonna be a nightmare, fully accept that. It's just how it is, okay? So uh, here I'm gonna put on screen all of the parts that I've had to order, things like gaskets, timing chain, the head, um, all of the bits that I'm gonna to need to pull apart in order to do the job. Have a look now. So right at the minute, I don't know if you can quite see, the car is up on end. That's me just testing to see how high it can be got up. I think I'm actually gonna do this job with the car on ramps and um, I'll show you how we do it, how we achieve that later, but it's probably what's gonna get the car highest off the deck to allow me to, to get under and do the work. Uh, first job now is to see if I can identify how to drain the coolant out of the engine crankcase and then we can get the head off um, but before that, we've got to be able to get the exhaust manifold, turbo, and the injectors uh, disconnected, and the EGR off the front, then the cylinder head can come out, okay? And then um, we're just waiting for the new part to arrive, then we can inspect any uh, cylinder damage. I don't think there will be any, it's nothing to, probably nothing to worry about there, but that's, that's it. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, step number one was to get the coolant drained out. <laughs> And uh, as you can see from this explosion of liquid, coolant has drained out. I couldn't find the drain plug in the end, so I ended up just pulling off the feed from the reservoir into the crankcase and uh, using a little sort of uh, plastic bottle arrangement to direct it down into the, uh, into the catch. Let's just get it started, really, and then we can get the head off. Well, soon. Okay, just for those of you that want to know, I've just released the EGR. There are three bolts that hold the EGR in position. One is right here, one is right here, and you can see both of those. They're not the easiest to get to, but if you have uh, an attachment bit that's like that, you should probably be able to get to it. And there's a third bolt that I didn't quite know about. You see them down there? These are right bugger to get to. Uh, 
the way I did it was uh, under this way and you need just enough clearance to clear the EGR valve so that you're not butting into it but not so long that you're actually hitting uh, the cooling fan in the front there it's just a bit of a pain anyway so that's released um, here's your little uh, bit of tubing it's like uh, speed fit type pipe um, anyway so that's released from there I'm not going to probably move it much more than that unless I have to um, it's released from the head now it's just time to get the exhaust shield off and the manifold unbolted hopefully that's not too difficult let's, uh, let's do it Right, a little bit of a clean up needed. Just been having a, a quick peek. Although they're a bit grimy, I don't think there's any cylinder damage there. Guys, I've made a mistake and uh, I'll share that mistake with you now. But uh, if I wanted to do the YouTube thing, I'm sure I could have just edited around this and uh, no one would think I'm stupid. But uh, let me explain. Down here is the cylinder head that came off the car. That's my cylinder head right there, okay? I bought a new cylinder head, or not a new one, a reconditioned one um, that came from eBay. And it's basically, to cut long, long story short, it's not the same. It looks very similar, but let me show you. I'll just uh, take you into my parts store and uh, show you the, the one that arrived. Here is the reconditioned cylinder head. When I unwrapped it, I thought, oh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Hang on a minute. There is a big difference, I thought. This is where the coolant feed goes in. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look the same, I thought. And it's not, is it? It's a different shape and it's in a different place. And when I examined the, uh, the underside, the, the gasket is ever so slightly different as well. And um, you know, where the coolant flows around the cylinder head, the holes are not quite in the right place. So I'm not prepared to put a slightly incorrect cylinder head onto my engine. So, a bit of scratching of heads and painful thoughts that I've just spent uh, money that I didn't need to spend. And um, there is a thought that there's actually nothing wrong with this cylinder head. So, what I'm gonna do is uh, do a little test. Now, I don't have the equipment to run a pressure test, but I can do a water tightness test on the valve stems. So that's what I'm gonna do now, just, just for shits and giggles. I'm gonna tip this up on end and we're going to clean up uh, where the valve seats are a little bit so that we can see it nicely. And then we are going to fill all of the inlet ports with water. And we're gonna see if any water makes it out of the inlet valve stems. And then we're gonna do the same thing uh, with the exhaust ports as well and um, then we know if it's watertight. So let's do it. You can see what we're gonna do is fill the inlet ports all along here with water and then we're gonna try and see. These big ones are obviously the inlet ports and the slightly smaller ones are the exhaust ports. So we're gonna see if we get any dribbles of water coming out of the inlet ports. Now, just for information the two that failed or the sorry the two that broke rocker arms are these two cylinders so these are the two that if we're going to suspect any it's going to be uh, these two cylinders here but who knows maybe they all leak maybe none of them leak who knows so where i'm going with this is that uh, if they can hold water that's uh, not quite the same as uh, being airtight but um, it's the best i can do oh dear 
Okay, this one here, definitely damaged. Okay, well, it's been a few minutes. This one's still dribbling out slowly, but um, not a drop from anyone else. So that's good news. Now I need to check the exhaust ports. Okay, as if by magic, we're now the other way up. And these are the exhaust ports up here. And we're gonna check the seals on the uh, exhaust valves now. Okay, the hole's a little bit careful. Okay, so yeah, you can see there's a little bit of, tiny bit of weeping there on cylinder three which tallies with the broken arms. We had uh, broken inlet rockers and broken exhaust rockers on these two cylinders and that tallies ex exactly. We had the water gushing out of this one, I think, one of these, and a tiny bit seeping from there. So, makes sense. Okay, so cylinder head's now gone off to a specialist to be, uh, to be reconditioned. They're gonna skim it, acid bath it, clean it, um, reseat the valves, and supply it back with a, a head gasket ready to go. So, you know, add in a few days extra, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's my own fault. It's what you get for trying to cut a corner by buying a uh, used reconditioned uh, cylinder head off eBay. You know, anyway, it is what it is. So that's off uh, to be reconditioned. When that comes back, that'll just be a reassembly job straight back on the head, all back together again. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna be attacking this from underneath. and I'm gonna start pulling apart the gearbox and everything uh, to take that out of the way to get access to the timing chain cover. On we go to step two. <laughs> 